Today, we have the pleasure of putting brakes on this trailer. This is about a 2008 uh, carry-on trailer, 6x12 with a V-nose. And it's got the Dexter axles on it. And so I ordered all the parts, hopefully, <laughs> through e-trailer. And they came in this box. And so we're going to unbox them and see what we got. So this is what was included in that big box. We've got the two drum assemblies for the brakes. And then we've got the left-hand brake kit here, the K3468-00 Dexter. And we got the right-hand brake kit, K3469-00. This is also a Dexter. And it's labeled right-hand and left-hand. So now you can see what has come in the drum brake kit. It's got the, uh, the two bearings, grease seal, the inner grease seal, the uh, lube hub with the, the grease fittings, got your nut with a cage to lock the nut and five new lug nuts. And then on the brake assemblies, this is the left-hand brake assembly. So you have the assembled brake assembly and the nuts that will go on the back here for the studs and the plastic caps that will fit in the back of here to cap off the adjusting slots. All right, I chalked up this wheel on the driver's side, walked up the, ja uh, the jack, kind of leveled the trailer out, jacked it up, took off the passenger side wheel, and there's the hub. All right, I'm gonna completely misuse a screwdriver here and a hammer to take off this grease cap. And it's four degrees, of course. And take a paper towel and wipe it off, clean off some of this grease so I can see what's going on in here. Retainer on top of the nut. So I'm gonna get the retainer off. I don't know how it goes on, so yeah, it looks like it just pops on. There it goes, it just popped off. Right, now I've got a nut to take off. <laughs> Usually they're hand tight, but they're, if they are uh, rich tight, then they're gonna be probably too tight and it's gonna lead to bearing failure eventually. Um, I'll get into that whenever I reinstall the hub, the new brake assembly, and you can see what I'm talking about. We were on the hub and it gets the bearing out, the bearing and the washer. And then the hub comes off. It's the inner bearing here and the inner seal here. And we're left with a greasy grime axle stub. All right. Now to install the assembly. I have the right side assembly for the passenger side. I changed my gloves because I don't want any grease on these uh, brake shoes. So I changed my gloves from the greasy ones to a brand new pair. These four studs here, one, two, three, four, fit in these four holes right here. Slip right on. And then you have four nuts. Tight nose, put those on hand tight. Four nuts are on hand tight, and now I've got to torque them on. And you have to look at the directions, what little directions there are for the torque specs. Mine are 45, 45 to 70 foot pounds. Now the other issue is getting a torque wrench on it because the hub and everything behind it is in the way of getting a good socket wrench on it. So that may become a challenge for you. We're trying to torque these nuts down. The problem we have is the lift kit 
is in the way of the torque wrench getting on the nuts. So this is a problem I'm going to have to solve. Okay, so I put a jack stand under it to protect myself. And I had to get back here to get those nuts torqued down to 40 to 70 foot pounds. Half inch drive wouldn't fit. So this was my uh, assembly that I used. This was a 3 8 drive, 11 16 swivel uh, snap-on socket with a 3 inch extension, 3 8 drive, and then a 3 8 to a half inch adapter, and then my torque wrench. It's not the best setup. I don't really like it, but I have, would have had to take the whole assembly apart. I think all that stuff's welded on there anyway, and I can't get it back off. So this is the only way I'm going to get that torque down. Uh, I used a short extension because I didn't want the twist in the extension. So I wasn't sure if this would pull the foot pounds or not, but it held up so far. I've got to do the other side with it. One other thing I forgot to mention is make sure that these two wires here don't get pinched when you're assembling all this. This is for your ground and your uh, brake power. And so watch out for these two wires. Now we're ready for the drum assembly. Okay, we got some wheel bearing grease. Make sure that you get not just grease, but some wheel bearing grease. And this is high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. I bought it at O'Reilly's. And this is a nasty part of the job, but it's got to be done for the bearings to survive. I'm going to make sure that my bearings are going to fit. This should be the inner bearing. Yep, it slides on the spindle. And then it's the outer bearing and it should fit on the spindle. It's going to be a tight fit. It should be a tight fit. If it won't fit now, I'm not going to put any grease on them. So they both fit. All right, usually the inner bearing, in this case especially, is outer, is bigger. So we've got to pack this bearing full of grease. Now I've seen guys get a lot of dirt and grease and just and put it together. That's not how I do it. I get me some good old grease on my hand here. You take this grit, this bearing, and you're forcing this grease up inside of those bearings, those needle bearings. And you want to keep doing it until that grease packs in there. It's a nasty, disgusting job, but hey, at least the grease is kind of clean. And you don't want this grease to get on the shoes, and you don't want to get this grease on the drum itself on the liner of the drum itself. So this one's pretty packed. I'm going to put it into the drum. I'm going to put the seal on it in a minute, but while I've got my gloves nice and greasy, put some more grease out here for the next bearing, outer bearing. And I'll go ahead and pack it while I'm already nasty. I don't know who invented these black gloves, but I used to do this barehanded, and this is so much nicer to be able to peel these gloves off and not have to wash my hands after all this. So whoever made these black latex gloves, I do appreciate it very much. All right, looks like I've got nice grease sticking out, squirting out from in between the the roller bearings there and the needle bearings. All right, so I've got my packed inner bearing here and my outer bearing right there. The seal has got to go right here. Right, this keeps the grease from going leaking out. So you gotta tap this thing in. They have drivers. Um, I've used a two by four. I've also just tapped it in with my hammer. So you gotta do, gotta get it in there square. You gotta get, that's a big thing. You gotta get it in there square. Tap it in there until it's flush. 
I'll wipe, make sure I wipe all the grease off. Also put a little thin film of grease on the rubber part so it doesn't, when you first start it, it doesn't run dry and burn this seal. Make sure there's no grease on the inside of this drum here. Might take a paper towel, wipe it out. If you need to, take some alcohol or something, rubbing alcohol, and rub the inside of that, clean it all out. Now we are ready to slide the drum on. This drum is pretty doggone heavy. Slipped on, really nice. <coughs> Seal, or outside bearing, sorry. Now we do the outside bearing. Washer. All right, so I'm going to put a washer on it. And I'm going to put a nut on it. Nut has got to be, you got to preload these bearings. <clears throat> you can use a wrench, I've got one, but you can use a fair channel lock so you can tighten that down. rotate the drum as I'm tightening it down to get a feel for how tight it's getting. I want that drum to center up on that spindle. <clears throat> Feeling really good. And a little drag on the brake shoes. Alright, so what I've got is I tightened that up and feel it tightened up. That nut is tight. The drum is rotating. Now I'm gonna back it off with like a quarter turn. Right, it's not like unbelievably tight, but I'm gonna back it off. This allows for some of the bearing, for the bearing to get hot and expand. If you tighten that nut and you leave it tight like that, you're gonna get premature bearing failure to you no know, expansion, so you've got to give it a little bit of free play to allow for heat. Oh yes, that's really nice. It's a good roll. But, all right, and we're going to put the, the uh, cage lock over it. Now, I'm not sure how it's put. I think it's supposed to go. The cage lock is four-sided. It's gonna go on there. It snaps on and it keeps this nut from turning back. Now you've got a nice rotation, nice play here. And that gets it protects the, the, the soft wood protects the cap here and it drives it on there straight. I've got a grease gun, I'll pop it on the big grease fitting there, and pump the bearing up full of grease. Now I'm going to slip the uh, dust cover on.
thing. Then we got to slide in the rubber plugs in the back. There's two of them. These are for the adjusting tool. Now, you have to make sure they're adjusted initially, but these particular brakes assemblies have automatic adjusters on them. So once you get them assembled initially, then these little caps pop into the holes and you shouldn't have to pull them back out again. All, right, all we gotta do now is wire this one up and we are ready. So finished putting on the brakes. Make sure you torque those lug nuts down and check them. And check the lube on your axles every once in a while. And took it for a test drive and the brake controller works. Everything works. Uh, I've tried it on both my Sierra three quarter ton and I've tried it on the Colorado and everything's wired up right. I'll have to do another video on the wiring. Everything's ready, brakes function correctly, everything's ready to go. We're a much safer setup right now.